is the Yarn Joy Podcast, episode number 228. Welcome. Well, I have a couple of finished objects to show you. These were, they weren't even works of progress last week. This is something that, this was blitz. <laughs> and so I got them done. So I have those two to show you. And then, of course, I have a few whips that I've been working on that I'll show you that I worked on also. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so if you watched yesterday's video, which was move, uh, no, not movie and stitch, <laughs> stitch your library number four, uh, I talked about um, a last minute baby shower gift that I decided to jump in and do <laughs> um, for a baby shower that I got invited, I am invited to for this Saturday. Okay, I got the invitation last Saturday. Okay, so I thought, well, can I make something? Because I didn't have a baby blanket really that I want, that I had on hand that that I wanted to give to them. Uh, they're having a little girl. And so I was thinking that um, maybe I could whip something up. So I did it. <laughs> so I uh, did a baby blanket, okay? And then I had some yarn left over of a three pack of yarn that I had used for the baby blanket. Only ended up using two skeins of it. And so I thought, well, what else can I make with this? So I made another project to go along with the gift. <laughs> and I just got that finished. It's like still warm because <laughs> I just finished it. So let me show you what I made um, in this baby gift blitz that I was part of, not part of, but I was in last several days. <laughs> okay, so for the baby blanket, um, this is a small baby blanket. This will be like, oh, I would say maybe a car seat blanket size or bassinet blanket or uh, just something to put over the baby maybe when it's laying down. I don't know. But anyway, it turned out pretty small. Uh, I'm thinking about blocking it. I'm thinking that it, that might help it a little bit. But anyway, let me show you. <laughs> okay, so this is the blanket that I end up making. Okay. That's it. <laughs> it is, I think it turned out really cute. I can't hold it up that well. Sorry. Uh, it probably needs to be blocked. But anyway, here is the blanket. I think I'm holding it upside down. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Get a kind of up close view of it now. Let me get back up and you can see all of it. It's not it's not very big. Okay, it measures uh, hold it up to my ruler here. It measures about hmm with the border. Now I, I put a border on it to, to make it bigger. <laughs> about twenty four inches across and about oh twenty eight something <laughs> inches um, the other direction. That's it. But it's really soft and I'm really liking the pattern. This pattern is called the let me get it my notes here. It's the Madeline blanket, which I think is so cute because my daughter in law's name is Madeline, so <laughs> spelled a little different than the way they spell that Madeline, but anyway. So that is the name of the pattern. Now the pattern does not have this uh pico shell border that I put on it it just stops right there okay it, this is a uh, several rounds of um, back loop only single crochets that's how they made this border it turned out really cute really pretty texture um, so you did this middle part first which has got shells and V stitches basically okay and then once you got, got that done then you did this back stitch only uh, single crochet border and then that was it and so I was thinking well it's for a little girl and I already had this um, shell stitch border pattern I've got in fact I've got a tutorial on it it is a pico shell border I think that's what it's called but I will link in the description box below the tutorial that I made for this pattern uh, for the border uh, I have it both in right and left-handed versions but anyway I think that the border 
that border really dressed it up and made it lacy and pretty uh, for a baby girl. So I think it's, I think it turned out really nice. Uh, now the yarn that I use is three weight yarn. If I would have used worsted, I would have gotten a bigger blanket out of it. Um, but I really wanted to use this pattern, this yarn. Let me find my remaining skein. Yep. Okay. So it was a three pack of yarn and it's Premier Yarns and it's called Fable. It might be a discontinued uh, baby yarn from Premier Yarns because I got it in, uh, do you remember? Well, maybe <laughs> you remember, but uh, how many years ago? Whew. Two or three years ago, Premier Yarns had mystery bags where you could either pick, pick a DK weight yarn or a worsted weight yarn mystery bags. And uh, I did that several times. And this is one of the three packs of yarns that I got in the DK package. I think you got like two packages of yarn, you know, like two different kinds. And each one had three skeins in the package. So you got like six skeins of yarn, okay? And so this was one of the packages I have. And look at the colorway. It's very pretty. It's purple, um, pink, yellow, and white. Okay. And the, the colorway name for this combination here is called Rapunzel. I thought that was so cute because it's Premier Fable. So like fairy tales, I guess. Fables. Anyway, <laughs> this is called Rapunzel. And like this used two almost two whole skeins. I had like a little bitty ball left over of the second skein. And so, um, that's what I did with this. <laughs> okay, now the border, the border is not the Rapunzel. The Rapunzel is only the body part, okay? And then with the border, I just went into my baby yarn stash back there and I found, um, a skein of the yellow that was, it, seemed like it matched practically identical to the yellow that was in that Rapunzel. And so I used the yellow and then I found a pink and that pink, I think that's that Jamie, Jamie yarns. I think I, I got it. I think that's the part that some of the yarn that I got that a friend of mine gave me the yarn that belonged to her grandmother. And so anyway, I think that pink was in there, but it was the perfect color pink that matched this pink. Um, uh, really well I think out of all the pinks that I have back there <laughs> that seemed to be matched okay and so I would have made the border bigger and picked out like the purple and put that in there but all of my DK purples was not that shade of purple if you can see that is more of a a bluer shade of purple I guess and the purples that I have back there are more of a pinker shade of purple heading toward like violet ish or grape you know but it wasn't uh, it wasn't the same tone or whatever uh, as that purple and then of course the white I use the white here um, and this is Bernat softy baby white I think or Bernat sport white baby sport maybe I don't remember Anyway, there is the baby blanket, and like I said, it is um, small, <laughs> but uh, I'm thinking, it, now it does lay pretty flat. I, I had to adjust the stitch count um, on the foundation row that I made for the border. I had to adjust it just a little bit because it was kind of, it was beginning to kind of ruffle. You know, so I would leave it flat, lay it flat and, and see what it do. <laughs> and then if it was like ruffling, then I ripped it out and it was just like one side. So I ripped it out or ripped it back and, um, I tried to skip ever so many stitches. Uh, I don't remember what the sequence was, but I tried to skip, um, ever so often I'd skip a stitch to get it where it was a decreased amount of stitches where then it would lay down flat. And then all I had to do is make sure that that foundation row that started the, um, the scalloped edge had to be a multiple of 10. So anyway, I figured it out. <laughs> and so, um, that is how that turned out. Now, I, like I said, I might go ahead and, um, dampen it and then pin it a little bit you know, and pin out, that'd be a lot of, I don't know, <laughs> that'd be a lot of pins to pin this, this scallop out, but we'll see. I don't know what I'll do. Anyway, um, so it's really soft yarn. I like it. I think it's a very pretty baby blanket. It's just not, it's not real big, but, um, 
I think she'll like it. One thing about the small size, it can even be like a, uh, when the baby gets bigger, it can even be like a Linus blanket, you know, like a comfort, comfort security blanket, you know, and it's a nice size for a um, small person to hang on to. <laughs> so that's an idea there. Okay, so as I said, I had this skein left over. It was a full skein. And as you can see, I still didn't use very much of it, but I was thinking, well, what else can I use? And I thought, well, I could make some baby booties, but then I was like, no, I don't really don't like making baby booties. And so I thought I could make a hat. I could make a baby hat. I still might do that, but I don't know, because today is Thursday. The shower's Saturday. <sighs> and I'm kind of tired of, you not tired, but you know, I'm getting worn out with this baby blitz. So I think, I think I'm done. <laughs> so anyway, what I decided to do is a lot of times what I like to do when I make a baby blanket for baby gifts, I like to make a baby blanket. And then uh, the last several baby gifts I have I have made and given, I will make an amigurumi to go along with the baby blanket. So that's what I did. <laughs> and now this amigurumi was made with the same yarn, or part of it, yeah. <laughs> and so that's DK weight yarn. So this amigurumi, I've made this pattern before, but it came out a lot smaller, but I'm kind of liking it. Uh, and I used a three millimeter hook because the yarn, even though it said three weight, it is very thin. You know, it's very thin, a thin number three. <laughs> so anyway, this is what I made. <laughs> Can you see? Woo, it's so cute. <laughs> Let me back it up here. Yeah, there it is. This is the Berry Patch Bunny, okay, uh, by Grace and Yarn. Oh, I didn't tell you. Huh. The, this Madeline blanket, it's called the Madeline blanket. It is by Danielle Pink Designs, and I will link it in the description box below. It is a free pattern, okay? Oh, and also, <laughs> that blanket, uh, the actual pattern did not call for variegated yarn. It called for where you did actual stripes, like on purpose stripes, uh, but I just followed the pattern using the variegated, and I think it turned out really nice, so. Okay, now on to the bunny. <laughs> so I, like I said, I use DK weight yarn for the for her dress. I use the same pattern. I mean, this the same yarn for the blanket. Okay, uh, the pink I just used the, a solid pink, the same I did on the uh, the border right there. Okay, and let's see the flowers right there. That is part of this. Uh, I just pulled out sections because the sections are pretty long as far as the colors go. Um, so I wouldn't, I guess it's not a variegated, I guess it's almost like a self striping, sort of short self striping, I guess, but it's long for variegated. <laughs> okay, anyway, use 12 millimeter eyes and look, I even stitched on the little eyelashes. I think she's, she's just, I think she just turned out really cute. Look at that. So cute. Now I didn't make her a, a um, a tail. I thought about it, but I really don't like making pom-poms if I don't have to. <laughs> and so I just, I just decided not to. So anyway, so I'm going to include this in with the blanket. And I think that's going to be a cute little gift. And so I went to Dollar Tree today and I picked up, um, a gift bag and a card because in the card I want to say something about that this blanket is supposed is for like a car seat or you know a small blanket because I don't know I kind of feel kind of bad that the blanket is so small but it'll it'll be nice I think yeah I like it okay <laughs> so that's finish object number one and number two and the only finish objects I have long explanation about all that hope that's okay <laughs> but I was really excited about that project I think I'm really pleased with it okay so that is all my finished objects let's go on to works in progress okay so I'm still working on the gingerbread boy uh, now last week I said that I was gonna get a lot done on him uh, done on him and I would have except baby blitz <laughs> so um I hope blitz is the right word to use but anyway so I did not get him all finished but I did get his Santa hat done see so I got that done uh I need to make the pom-pom for the end of his hat there but and, and the hat's not stitched on as you can see I've still got some strings but anyway the hat is complete 
okay just a little tweaking here and there I think it'll be good and that's all I've done see no, no nothing else <laughs> um, since last week um, I use pipsqueak yarn I'm trying to think I use pips pipsqueak yarn for the last three rows here um, to make it fuzzy I did that with the other gingerbread boys and I really like the way that turned out and I still had a um, scrap piece scrap ball of the pipsqueak yarn and so I was able to have enough to do that and I still have a little bit little bit left um, but anyway, so I have to make his vest and you know the little, there's more little trim peppermint trims and things I have to put on the vest and some buttons and so there's more I have to do so now that I'm finished with these baby items I will get back on to him so uh, But I will pop in a picture right here of the first one that I made so that way you can see what he's gonna look like when he's all nice and dressed <laughs> Here it is Okay, so that's works in progress. Number one is I did get his hat made. That's it. <laughs> okay, so works in progress number two is... Oh, I had a request from somebody to make a backpack buddy. Um, and so she contacted me, wanted me to make it. And I said, sure, I'll make one. I'll make it. And so this was the... Uh, it, was a, it is something that I had made as part of the donations that I sent to Amber of Ooh Ah Crochet for the Garfield make-alongs where uh, she saw it. And, and so she sent me a message and told asked me if I could make one because she had a new bag that she wanted to put put clip it on and so I said sure I'll make it for you and so this is what I've done so far <laughs> I have the bottom and, and she wanted the exact colors that I used in the other cupcake and so that's what I did so I have the bottom in this really small purple DK weight yarn that has no ball band so I don't know I just have a little bit of it left I don't know what it is but it was very thin Okay, very thin, that one right there. <laughs> uh, it could have been a two instead of a number three weight because it's very thin. Anyway, so I did. that's a purple on the bottom. And then the top here is just some more of that Bernat um, Baby Sport, I think. And it actually is a little thicker than the purple, uh, but it's working out okay. And so you start with the circle, you build up and get that bottom part. And then you're done with the purple, you cut that off. And then you attach the white and you make the little shell border right here to make the little scallops like the icing and then right now what I'm doing is building up and then I will start uh, decreasing to make the dome at the top of the um, cupcake I will stuff it and then um, there's a cherry that goes right on the top of it and uh, I'll make the cherry and then attach the backpack buddy clip to the inside of that cherry and then I will stitch that onto the top of the cupcake and then there's some sprinkles and I'll just get some um, either embroidery floss of different colors or some DK weight yarn or even if I have to split the yarn strand to make it thinner and I'll get different colors and just make stitches all the way or all you know all around to um, be like uh, sprinkles on it so anyway it's coming along it shouldn't take me too much longer to finish it now that I've finished the baby project <laughs> okay so that is works in progress number two is a cupcake backpack buddy now this pattern I and all these I will link in the, below in the description box the gingerbread boy is a paid-for pattern but everything else I think that I've made or showed you yeah is free pattern so I will link this one I think it's called I should have looked it up or wrote it down but I didn't but it's called like Orlinka something I think it's in a different language but then you can you can do the English translate on your computer and it will change it I think I think that's one that I used I'll link it below in the description box though okay um, so that is works in progress number two that is oh no I forgot to list this one but um, if you remember from last week I was watching working on a cookie monster hat and this is a, a pattern by hopeful honey here is a picture of the hat um, not my picture but you know from the pattern here's the picture <laughs> okay so that is what the hat's going to look like except i'm not going to put the ear flaps or the ties on it it's just going to be straight around or straight across beanie okay and so uh but that pattern is for a size three to six months uh, um 
yeah, three to six months, and I think she used DK weight yarn. And my this is for my grandbaby, and he is almost right at turning six months. And so this is for some pictures that they're gonna take um, of him for six month for six month pictures. And so um, she wanted me to make a Cookie Monster hat. And so I'm trying to size it up. I'm using worsted weight yarn. I went up. Uh, one, for, I think one hook size or two hook sizes. I'm using a five millimeter hook and I believe I think that I don't remember anyway I, I made it once tried it on his head it did not fit I didn't make it I didn't mean I made it partial just enough to see if it's gonna fit on his head and I, I tried it on him when he was here and it didn't fit and so I ripped it out changed it to a different hook size and then I worked on it and then tried it on his head and then it, it then after that it did fit except that it was not long enough so that's where I had it that's why that marker is there so I have uh, you know I've lengthened it uh, still have it connected though because I'm I'm gonna see baby tomorrow <laughs> and so I'm gonna try it on his head again and see if I got the length right where it, go, it goes down over his ears um, I'm not sure I may have to keep going a while before before I get the length right but anyway so there is the hat and then I started working on the accessories so it's got big uh, puffball eye not puffball but ball eyeballs <laughs> it's on the top it's not flat so the eyeballs go on the top so I have one of them made and I have to make a pupil and sew that on there and then I have to make the other one I have done that um, but it's getting there <laughs> and then of course I have to make his mouth I think it's in black and I believe if yeah if you saw in the picture there's a cookie that I have to make and so like at the corner of the mouth I think so anyway I'm still working on it and but I need to get right on to this now that I'm finished with the baby stuff um, because I think by the end of next week they'll want the, the hat so um, working on that so, and like I said, I'm going to be keeping the baby tomorrow for a little bit, and so um, I'll be able to try it on him and hopefully adjust it while I have him and keep trying it on him to make sure it's right. <laughs> okay, so that is all my works in progress. Okay, upcoming, uh, I this upcoming Wednesday will be uh, the next episode of Movie and Stitch. It'll be when I watch the movie that starts with the letter V which I, I'm going to watch the movie Valiant. I haven't watched it yet. It's a Disney movie, so I um, think that's the one I'm watching for V. And then I need to pick one for W. I haven't picked one yet, um, for sure. I can always do Wizard of Oz, <laughs> but, I mean, I've seen it a bunch of times. And I try to pick things that I haven't seen in a long time or things that I haven't seen. So um, we'll see. I'll probably pick something else. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so that's coming along is we're getting down to the end of the uh, alphabet <laughs> so this upcoming Wednesday will be movie and stitch letter V and then I will show the progress of what I'm working on with that series over there on that um, video so uh, that's upcoming uh, yesterday I just did stitch your library episode number four and I showed the progress that I'm working on on that and I did um, that's a work in progress but I'm showing it in that that video so uh, go check that out I'll link it below so then you can see my uh, project that I'm working on during that uh, for that series <laughs> okay and then um, oh I want to show you this um, this is possibility of upcoming projects I think it's really cute okay so I got the, I think this is no I'm about to say this is the newest crochet world magazine that I received but it's not because I just got a newer one but this one is the October 2021 edition uh, edition yeah it looks like this okay you might have seen this at the craft stores or if you get this subscription you may have this anyway so I was flipping through this looking for looking at projects and I came upon this project and I think it would be really cute I just put my hand up here because it's covering the pattern but look at these little baskets aren't they cute they're like uh, woodland creatures you know you got a bear right there and then here's a fox and a raccoon but I thought that that would be that would kind of be cute as a baby gift because I have a friend somebody else having a baby well the friend is not but her daughter is having a baby It'd be the first grandbaby for them and I believe her nursery um, 
design or decor is woodland animals, I think, because I need to find out, though. Maybe I will text my friend and ask her because they had a baby shower for her. I didn't go, but I saw pictures um, through Facebook uh, of the decor they did for the for that baby shower and it was woodland creatures and I was thinking well maybe she, that's what she's decorating in is woodland creatures and I thought wouldn't that be cute those little baskets in a nursery you know to put you know whatever you know that you need at the changing table or whatever you know uh, I don't know cotton balls and diaper cream and you know what not <laughs> but I just thought that would be that set would be really cute so I think I'm gonna make that set um, as a gift for her because I just think those are that would be cute little baskets they're all different sizes they're like you know they're three different sizes I think the largest one is six and a half inches in diameter and then that's the bear and the raccoon is the next size which is five inches in diameter it says and the small one is the fox and it's four and a half inches in diameter anyway that's what i'm thinking i just think it'd be really cute okay uh so that could be upcoming project i don't know the baby's due in december um and i already missed the the baby shower so i don't I, it's not big and pressing to get it done <laughs> um right now you know it won't it wouldn't be another blitz <laughs> but um because I can give it to them at church and so anyway that's what I'm thinking <laughs> okay and then I don't know there's all kinds of things upcoming <laughs> oh but I did want to mention that uh, if you've been watching my videos you notice that I have a new I have an intro now Ooh, I have an intro <laughs> and uh, a kind of a new logo um, and I wanted to give credit to the person that designed that and that is my my daughter-in-law Madeline um, I asked her to um, helped me come up with a logo and she came up with a she she is was trying out some new software and she came up with this logo and and then I said oh that's neat and I said could you make it animated could it move you know and so that's what she came up with the bouncing yarn ball and then it has the the logo so I think that is really cute I really am pleased the way it turned out and I hope that you like it I think it's I it's good I think it's cute <laughs> and then I just picked out some free music that are here on here on YouTube that I added to it and um, so there you go I, I just really love it and so um, I will link down below in the description box uh, my daughter-in-law and my son's Instagram page that they have created that shows their different art projects and things that they've done and um, possibility of if you're needing a logo maybe you can contact her and see if she can work on one for you um so um she is a stay-at-home mom now and so this is something that she's trying to think of she might be able to do a little bit on the side so check her instagram page out uh on that page oh and it's called uh Sof sophisticatedly i think <laughs> sharp i think that's how you pronounce it anyway uh I'll link it below and uh, but check it out there's even paintings and things that my son who um, paints and does different pro art projects he's an art teacher as well but anyway um, they have some of his paintings and stuff on there too so you can check those out okay so I just wanted to give credit to her that she's the one that created my logo and uh, you know the little intro thing in the beginning so um, thank you Madeline <laughs> Okay, and so I think that is it. Uh, I do want to, as always, thank my new subscribers that have uh, recently subscribed to my channel. Welcome. I hope you in, enjoy the videos and things that I have on here. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing and following along with me as I show the progress on all my mini projects that I work on and also the different tutorials that I have posted uh, and put up on my channel and if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so and um, follow me along on this crochet ride I'm on <laughs> and um, thank you so much for those that have been with me from the beginning of course I appreciate you all as well <laughs> and thank you everybody for all the great comments and things that I get I really enjoy reading them and interacting with you as much as I can um, 
and my Facebook group. Go join the Facebook group. I can even interact better with everybody over there uh, or try to as much as I can. And I really like that because then you can post pictures of what you're working on and then I can see what you're doing. And um, so we can all share together. It's, it's really fun over there. Okay. Uh, that's that's it. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.